Okay, question for coach in person. After kind of a bit of a slow start, what did you like about the way the guys bounced back and just kind of really seemed like played a complete game for the most part? Yeah, to your point on both ends, like the vibe, the feel. Um, you know, when we have 31 assists, obviously for, on 43 baskets, you can see it, feel it, the difference out there. And so offensively, the ball was moving. Obviously, Jalen coming back is, you know, a difference maker as far as a guy that can create. Uh, but not only for himself and others, it's the space he opens up for everybody else. Uh, less attention to Jason, um, guy they have to account for. So you saw that on the offensive end. Defensively, uh, really did a good job on Ante Tacopo, uh, especially in the first half, seven points. Uh, taking him out, being the focal point there. We knew he was going to be aggressive in the second half, but you know, not, not only did we score 30 in the last three quarters, we defended them well and held them into the 20s. How did you think Jalen looked out there? And looked like one point he... Hurt his leg, was that just, he just kind of knocked knees with somebody? Yeah, he bumped knees and he was, he was okay. We took him out a minute or two earlier than we would have liked because of that. But, um, you know, keep him right at the 30 minute mark. Uh, his impact was obviously invaluable out there. And you could see what he, his imprint on the game, both ends of the floor. But um, yeah, he was explosive. He looked confident, exactly what we saw with him in the workouts and this extra time and ramp up of rehab and, and weights and everything he did to prepare himself. He looked a lot more comfortable tonight than when he came back initially. And how much does, like, just even his presence just free things up? But, like, for Jason in particular, yeah. he's got so much attention from defenses. Yeah, you can see the crowd when he's on the floor and when he's not. It's pretty apparent there. And so, you know, it's what he brings for the team. I mean, another superstar elite scorer. And uh, teams have to, you know, can't load up as much. So it's, it's pretty apparent what he does. And, uh, well, good to have him back. It looked like... Uh, Dennis and Jason were having a little disagreement or something there before you call that timeout. What was going on? Yeah, uh, some guys missed each other basically on a, in a on transition. Uh, didn't see each other. I think took a foul. They took a foul and we missed an opportunity to score there. But the one thing I talked about in the last few days in our meetings and watching film was accountability with each other, not just coming from me yelling the whole time. And so, honestly, uh, I like to see that than them not say anything. So. You know, those happen, and by the time we left the timeout, it was done. I guess at this point, you come to expect Grant to hit those shots, but in terms of how physically he plays, I'm thinking specifically of the little thing between him and Portis. I mean, how much has he shown his willingness to just get into the physical part of the game? Yeah, he knows who he is he, and what he has to do to be successful. And so, Another thing we talked about is, you know, showing the film of that five game trip of uh, whether it was LeBron running, going down the lane or whoever it may be. Um, we didn't like some of some of our lack of physicality. And we talked about that and said, I'd rather you guys put somebody on their ass or get into it with somebody than let guys waltz down the lane. And so we knew Giannis and certain guys were going to be aggressive tonight. And, you know, we needed to fight back and get back to who we were at the start of the year. And so I welcome that at all times. One thing went right after that play during the timeout, you pulled Grant aside, you know, what were you? Just on the short, short closeout, um, you know, differentiating when Giannis has the ball and Drew Holiday and uh, our lack of communication getting back in transition after makes on a few times and he short close on Rodney Hood when he hit the three. So we're just talking about, and we showed it at halftime when Giannis has the ball, the crowd we want to show versus others. And so that's all it was. He crowded too much and left the shooter when he didn't have to. In terms of uh, defense on Giannis, I'm just wondering what Al's kind of impact was out there, especially matched up with him a lot tonight. Yeah, he's a guy that we're confident uh, can guard him. Decent one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, transition is another thing that that's really team defense with him coming downhill with the head of steam. But when Al's on him versus other guys in the post, we will live with a lot of those shots. Um, still want to make plays and show him crowds and be aggressive. But, uh, you know, to his credit, seven points at half. Um, we saw some frustration there and knew he was going to come out aggressive. And... He did in the second half, start to put his head down more, but uh, great overall job there. A guy that uh, what, just had 40, whatever, the other night, and then triple doubles and all that to hold him to 20 on, um, you know, 14 shots. Great job by our guys, whole group. You may you mentioned that you, you didn't like some of the kind of unimpeded drives to the 
to the cup on the trip and the toughness that you wanted. How do you, can you coach that? How do you, how do you encourage your team to be tough but not dirty, to, to not let certain guys get into the lane and, and coast and boast about it when they're done? You know, how do you kind of teach that toughness? You know, we were talking about it all year, our identity and who we want to be. Um, and then you just show them. Like we showed them film of Westbrook getting down the lane, flexing and make, doing his antics there. We showed them LeBron guys basically moving out of his way and had a very, I had a very animated film session off of that trip showing all five games. And so, you know, whether it was down to the Mitchell game one to, you know, Phoenix in game, game uh, five, we showed a lot of film, a hundred plus clips and transition isolation was one of them, one long section and didn't love how we, you know, didn't fight at times. And so, you put it out there, uh, guys responded well, but there's no way to sweep it under the rug. You show them what it is and how ugly it looks when you see five games in a row of those clips. And so the big picture of seeing that trip and where we ended up uh, defensively, we didn't like that feeling and we got back to who we were tonight. Does, I mean, you play from a different generation, does that type of stuff not bother just because of maybe the AAU stuff and the, does not bother some of the younger players like it used to your guys and the guys who are older than you that said, that's not happening again. Is that something that has to be kind of pushed across to them? I think so. Uh, you know, all these guys are working out together in the summer. They spend a lot of time together with all-star games and all that. And, you know, quite honestly, I, I gave Jason examples of what I used to say to Kawhi as a young rookie and respecting guys too much at times. I told him, these guys aren't your older brother. Don't treat them like that. And he took it to heart and, um, you know, came out in attack mode tonight. But it's across the board. Our whole group, uh, we know what we have to do to be effective. and. If my guys know me, you know, I said I'm the most competitive guy, and I want to see that reflect on you guys. And so, like I said, they took the tape to heart, um, bounced back tonight. Wrap it up right there. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.